This is Dr. Neufeld going over our lecture notes for international time zones. Remember this video, uh, if I go too fast, is posted on my website, which is drneufeld.com. Also, these posted slideshows are also on my uh, um, website. So, international time zones, I'm helping uh, you understand these time zones so that when you become an international world traveler, you're going to know how this works. First, take a look at this map. Remember how we studied latitude and longitude, and the world is divided in 24 longitudinal zones. Why? Because there's 24 hours in a day. But we see a zero, uh, actually here, zero uh, zone, and then we see 12 at each end. But you can see how it's smaller. Well, if you add 12 and 12 is 24, but add this zero one, and that's 25. Well, in actuality, these last two longitudinal zones are only 30 minutes, not one hour. So still, when you add up everything, it's 25 hours. Now, uh, 24 hours. Now, if the world was perfect, all the countries around the world would be following these straight lines to match their longitudinal zone for hours, but it doesn't work like that. That's why... As we're studying time zones around the world, you've got to look at these colors here. This is what will help you. For example, uh, look here in the United States, the dark blue color. It's these states here, if we go down with a straight line, about who should be following six hours ahead of the zero, the first time zone. But it's not like that. You see the squiggly lines, and that's why... Time zones is also based on the border of the state, or it could be based on mountain ranges. One side could be two hours ahead, one side the one hour. So that's why you see squiggly lines all around the world. No country is following the same time zones. Also, you see the, uh, the lines here about the daylight savings times, the slash lines. It looks like half of the countries around the world, uh, maybe two thirds, do follow a daylight sa do not follow the daylight savings time, but we here in the United States and California do. In other words, we change the time twice a year. We move our clock up. The whole point was to have a little bit more sunlight in the summertime. But even in the United States, it's different. Of the 50 states, there are two states I believe that do not follow the time uh, daylight savings time, so they don't change the clock. One of them here is Arizona. So in California, we're already one hour separate from Arizona because we we'll see how we're in this color here, minus eight, and they are in this color, minus seven. But when we change our time zones, we have the same time for six months of the year, and then we switch. So that makes it a little bit more confusing. Also, what is weird is there are some areas, like those in this orangish color, who don't follow the one hour time zones, they break it off into half hours. Just a few countries around the world do this, so that's even more weird. There's also one country that breaks it down into 15 minutes. But for the most part, you can see how we're all based on time zones around the world. 24 hour time zones, and we start off here at zero because it's based on the longitudinal and latitudinal lines that they set at Greenwich Village in Greenwich, a village just north of London, England. So that's why they gave this group the first time zone. Then all of these are one hour or two, three, four, all the way up to 12 hours ahead of Greenwich Village. And all of these here, up to 12, are one hour ahead of Greenwich Village. One way, though, when you're figuring out uh, times from one city to the next, for example, difference between New York and Los Angeles, you can look at New York here, which is minus 5 and Los Angeles, which is here in the dark purple, minus eight. So that means there's a three hour time difference, five, six, seven, eight. So if it was uh, 5 p.m. in Los Angeles, one, two, three hours ahead in New York, 8 p.m. Or if I asked you if it's 8 p.m. in Los Angeles, in New York, what time is it in Los Angeles? One, two, three, three hours ahead, eight minus uh, three is five. So that's how we're gonna remember it. A few things to remember, though. First of all, yes, there are 25, 24 time zones, as I've already mentioned. But most of the world is based on military time, not the U.S. What do we do? We use a.m. or p.m. A.m. is in the morning from midnight to 12 noon, and then p.m. is 12 noon to midnight. 
but most of the world is on military time. Or in other words, they don't use AM or PM. They use the clock from 0 o'clock all the way up to 24 o'clock. So again, that's weird when you're starting to travel around the world and you're realizing that if somebody says it's 23 o'clock in their country, what is that? For us, it would be 11 p.m., one hour before midnight, but around the world they would say 23 o'clock. So zero uh, or midnight to 12 a.m. for us is zero to 12 for everyone else around the world, but then zero or 12 noon to 12 p.m. for us would be 13 o'clock to 24 o'clock. So that's Again, military time, although our military uses it, but the rest of us in our country do not. This AM and PM, though, are Latin terms. Ante meridian meaning before noon, and post meridian meaning after noon. But few countries use AM PM like we do. So the lines naming the change in hours around the world, again, are not straight. I already showed you how they're squiggly because it's based on borders of the country or states, etc. Uh, I already mentioned how some uh, states use and uh, countries use daylight savings time. Many, oh, most do not. Few do, like the United States. But even in the United States, there's two states who do not use daylight savings time. And the whole point was to save some time on the clock to give us more light in the sun, uh, summertime. Let's look at a quick map of the United States. Now, if the longitudinal line was running straight down here, we would have to say that part of Idaho should be with California time or in blue and part should not. But the whole state wanted to be on the same. So that's why again you see these squiggly lines. Yet here is a state, Montana, that most of them are on this time while part of the state is on one hour before. Well why is that? It could be the mountains here. Then most people who live in this part of Montana maybe do most of their business over here while the people on the other side of the mountain live over here. So that's again why we have these squiggly lines. Again you see how Arizona is a little bit different because they do not practice daylight savings time like California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, everyone else does but not Arizona. Here's the other state. Uh, Indiana does not use daylight savings time, but everyone else does. So again, longitudinal line, if it was going straight here, these states here would all be in one, would be uh, in a particular time zone, but we're um, not following the rule, but the whole world does not follow the rule. Again, here's where you see the colors and see how very few countries are matching the line. Here's another map. There's so many maps you can find on the internet to look at the um, time around the world. Again, here's the zero, the uh, zero degrees longitudinal line. The prime meridian runs right through here. So we have seven and a half points on each side, which makes it 15. So this is zero, and then this is minus one, minus two. Here's plus one, plus two. And even in Europe, for example, you can see how England. Maybe on one time, but the rest of Europe is one hour ahead, except one country here, Portugal. They're on the same time as England. So interesting. So again, United States, one, two, three, we're in four time zones for the contiguous United States. But then Hawaii and Alaska are on two other different time zones. Very interesting, too, is there's one country here. China, who's big, they should have one, two, three, four, five different time zones because they're so big. They're bigger than the United States. But yet the whole country rules on one time. So Beijing, it's on the time of Beijing, which is here. This is the yellow line here. <clears throat> so if, uh, it's 12, uh, well, let's say, let's put it this way. If it's 7 a.m. in Beijing when the sun rises, it's one, two, three. Three. It is 7 a.m. over here as well, but it should be seven. It should be 4 a.m. So if the sun rises at 7 a.m. here, it's still 7 a.m. here, but the sun rose at 4 a.m. And this is in China. It's a huge country. So the whole country rules on one time zone, their capital city, even though it should be in one, two, three, four, 
one, two, three, four, five different time zones. The country with the lar the, the biggest country in the world with the most time zones is Russia. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten time zones in Russia. That's almost half the world, but that's how big they are. <clears throat> Here's one I'm going to uh, suggest you use for your homework because I put some cities on here. And in fact, I added some more cities that are on here, but this will make it easier if I ask you what time is it in Washington, D.C., if it's 7 a.m. in Los Angeles. So then you can just count ahead. 7 a.m., look at the time zones here, 8, 9, 10. So if it's 7 a.m. in Los Angeles, it's 10 a.m. in Washington, D.C. Now, England is here in yellow while the rest of Europe is in this purple. England is here on the zero prime meridian while the rest of Europe is here on plus one purple. So if I said if it's 12 noon in London, England, what time is it in Paris, France? It would be one o'clock in Paris, France. So this is how you're going to be doing some guessing on time zones around the world. I'm also giving you this map. This one's a little bit easier, at least to get started. It uh, doesn't have names of cities or countries, but you can see uh, this is an important thing to understand time zones as using these color codes here. Now remember, if the lines are slashed, that means they do not observe daylight savings time. So we can see it looks like most of North America and Europe and Russia observes daylight savings time and the rest of the world most. Does not now it looks like Chile does, and part of Brazil, but not not all of Brazil. Again, so very interesting. So, I hope this helps uh, um, with understanding world time zones, especially when you become a world traveler and you want to know well, how long is it going to take you to travel from one city to the next. But also when you get there, what time is it? What's interesting is if you're traveling, say, from Europe to North America, you're going backwards. But the time is still moving forward. So sometimes you could leave at 12 noon on Monday and get home at Sunday night in another country. That's what's weird. So I hope you understand these time zones. Again, check Quizlet, check Ed uh, Puzzle, check your Google Classroom assignments, check my website. Lots of videos to help you understand and work with this. And if you need help, email me. Thanks.